it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for your next PB&J card class. And today I'm going to be making a Christmas card using this slapstick cling stamp called Sparkler. And then I'm also going to use this stamp called Oak Christmas Tree. And I'm going to use it in a different way. I'm actually going to use the beautiful flourishes that are part of that tree on my background. So here's a look at the card that we'll be creating. And there you can see how I've used that tree in a different way. So to begin, I'm starting with Canson 140 pound watercolor paper, and this is a Spellbinders die, and I just want to trim the very bottom to have that shape. So I've just inserted my paper, I'm going to use a piece of washi tape, and then run that through my die cutting machine. Now I'm going to stamp my image onto my watercolor paper, and I'm using Stazon ink to do this. The color is Spice Chai, and I really like this color for stamping images and watercoloring as opposed to a black. It just gives a little bit more natural feel and looks almost a little bit less um, coloring bookish where you've got this image that's just in black. This is just a little bit more natural. So I've stamped that onto my watercolor paper and I'm going to paint this using Sakura Koi watercolors and I'll just be putting on lots of layers onto the poinsettia using oranges and reds, golden yellows, even some magenta colors and I'll put on each layer onto the petals and I'm just mixing up my colors right now and then in between each layer I will dry the piece and go back and add more color and this really help, lets me build up a lot of depth of color towards the tips of the petals I'm applying more yellow and then towards the center of the petal or the center of the flower you'll see more of the reds so once the petal is wet, then I can drop in that color and let the water blend and bleed it on its own. So here I wasn't quite thinking and I started coloring the petal that was right next to the one I just did. And you can see there where it just caused the paint to blend into the petal that was right next to it, which isn't a big deal because I'm going to go back and add a lot more layers. But going forward, I did decide to kind of skip over every other petal and paint them so that they didn't blend into each other so that some would be lighter and darker in different areas so I've put on that first layer now I'm going back in and darkening up the color so that was dry and then I'm darkening that in I put down the paint directly from the paint set that's that real rich dark color and then I'll go back and blend it with water and that will help that fade into the tip of the petal and into those yellows. I just keep go back and working that now I'm using more of a red the other one was more of an orange this is more of a true red that I'm blending down into that and it's still wet where I'm working that color into so they the water helps the colors blend and flow into each other. So just kept on working on those petals till I was happy with the look, adding lots of layers, drawing in between. Here I'm going to paint the leaf. So I started with a blue towards the stem and then added yellow and then I'm mixing those in together and also getting some great green tones by doing that. And while that's wet, I can just keep dropping in more color and letting the water really kind of blend them together. So now I'm going to begin painting the background. And I put down the paint near the flower. And then before it has a chance to dry, I go back in with just plain water and blend that out into the white area. So again, dropping that paint and then blending it out. And you'll see that I'm twisting my piece so that I don't set my wrist um, into an area that I just colored. You could color this like I'm doing here with watercolors. This technique would also um, be fun or this layout would be fun with Copic markers or colored pencils. This image works great with any of those. 
You could even color your flower using one medium and then go in and paint the background with the watercolors like this or add distress ink around the flower. And then I also decided, while that was still just a little bit damp, to drop in some of those golden tones that's in the center of the poinsettia and also on the very tips of the petals, just to warm up this background so it didn't end up looking too gray. This is one thing I really do love about watercolors is how easy it is to really paint around an image and add that painted background without having to cut a mask and then apply the inks over the top. For me it's just nice to be able to paint it on exactly as I would like it. And then I am darkening things up a little bit and dropping in some more browns down here at the bottom. Now here I wanted to add a little more dimension to the poinsettia, so I'm taking a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft watercolor pencil, and I'm actually using the black, so I went real dark here, and I'm just coloring on any of the petals that are sitting underneath another petal, so adding a shadow in that way. You could also go back in and do this with watercolors. I just really like the control that I had in these tight spaces with the pencil. And then I also added just a little bit of brown as well, going right over the top of the black and then extending a little bit further than where the black was. I have to admit at this point I started getting scared that I added too much black <laughs> and got worried that I had ruined it, but once I went back in with some water and blended that out, then I was okay with the look. And then you'll also see on the final photo, I did go back and add some black splatters over the top of the flower and a little bit on the background just to tie in that color so that it wasn't just in those shadow areas. I also dropped in a little bit more of that golden yellow color here. Now I'm ready to add my background stamping. Now this is where I'm using the stamp called Oh Christmas Tree, but I love the flourishes on this tree. So I've inked it up first with a darker color, which is this is Rich Cocoa from Memento Lux, and I'm stamping it onto my background. And really with the shape of the tree, the only thing I'm avoiding is stamping the star that's at the top of the tree. So it's really easy to add this to a background and not have it end up looking at all like a tree. So I, I've done a card with this where I've watercolored it as a tree, but I love that I can get double duty from this stamp and get these great flourishes. So on this side of the card where there's more of the brown watercolor background, I use the darker color. And now over on the left, I'm going to use a lighter color. This is Memento Lux ink in the color of Toffee Crunch. And this I'm just going to stamp a couple of times here over on the left hand side of the card. I think this stamp will really be great for mixed media projects too, whether they're Christmas or not, to add a beautiful texture in the background. So here's a look at the finished card. I just mounted it to some pattern paper and added it to my note card. And I also stamped my sentiment in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I also made a second card using the same layout and same techniques. But I used the Christmas tree stamp, but this is on an everyday card. So that flourish is really great for any season. 
Thanks so much for watching. For details and more information, visit the Penny Black website, www.pennyblackinc.com, and here's a list of all the supplies used.